How many times have you heard churn is bad for business? Of course, it hurts when customers leave your product, but nothing remains the same, neither in life nor in business. Still, it's not the reason to panic. Let's better make it clear why churn happens and how to deal with it. Hi, I'm Ilya, a founder of Alekin, a product design agency for SaaS. From my experience, many SaaS businesses come for a customer-oriented design to reduce their churn rate. That's why I've decided to discuss this topic with you. In this video, we'll discuss what is churn rate, how to calculate it, what level churn is okay for SaaS companies to have, and finally, what you can do to reduce it. But before we get into it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. We've got a ton of valuable insights about SaaS businesses and product design. Now, let's start with the definition. In essence, the SaaS churn definition is pretty simple. It means the percentage of customers who left their product over a certain period. Customer churn rate is a crucial indicator if your SaaS business faces problems that can negatively affect its growth. Churn rate directly influences financial metrics, such as recurring revenue, customer acquisition costs, and lifetime value. Let's see how these metrics are connected. The first one is monthly recurring revenue. When customers leave, they take your income with them. Every SaaS company needs to have a stable and predictable cash flow for consistent business growth, which is why this metric is very important. Next is customer acquisition cost. If customers churn before you get back expenses spent on their acquisition, the outcome will be huge losses in the long run. By the way, I've talked about the customer acquisition cost in another video, make sure you check it out. Link is down in the description too. And finally, customer lifetime value. The longer a user stays with your product, the more money they can bring. Simple customer churn impacts lifetime value as it naturally decreases possible revenue that the company could have earned. So it's clear that churn influences your business growth. But why do customers leave? Some possible reasons for that are users had different expectations from your product, your product doesn't have features or services they need, you bring wrong customers on board, you've got poor onboarding and support, price offering doesn't fit the customer's budget, or your product has critical bugs you fail to fix. In some cases, it can be that everything is okay with your product, but the value is not visible. As a consequence, customers don't understand why they should pay for it and leave. Okay, now it's time to move to calculation. The simplest way to calculate the churn rate is divide the number of churn users by the total number of users. In this formula, the number of churn users means how many people left for your service within a certain period, and the total number of users stands for all customers you had during this period. At first glance, this may seem easy as ABC. In reality though, you need to consider many nuances so that your calculations show a real picture. Firstly, you need to define what you will take at the moment of your churn. It can be either the moment a customer doesn't renew the subscription or the moment they cancelled it. In this case, there is always a chance to get customers back before their subscription ends. Also, before the calculation starts, it will be useful to decide exact time frames, a month, a quarter or a year. Sample size, so-called cohort, it defines how representative and predictive the results will be. And customer segment, low tier and high tier plan segments may have different churn numbers. Let's say you did everything well and now you're looking at the final churn rate number with a few questions on your mind. What on earth does this percentage mean? Is it low, high or normal? And what is the good churn rate for SaaS? Keep calm, I'm about to talk about it. Though there are lots of opinions about the average churn rate for SaaS companies, most experts support the idea of 5-7% to range annually at the benchmark. I will explain a bit later why I stress the word annually, just know that it's important. While you can take this range as a reference, the churn rate norm depends much on a company's revenue growth. Here is a graph to see how the churn rate and the revenue increase relate. In this graph, how growth companies are those that increase revenue by 75% year to year. Medium growth companies have a revenue increase between 25-75% to annually. Finally, low growth companies have less than 25% increase. The percentage of each pie shows how many companies in a particular growth segment have a churn rate of less than 5%, from 5-10% to and a greater than 10%. So as you can see, the larger companies are much closer to the desired 5-7% to SaaS annual churn rate. This observation seems reasonable. Big SaaS companies usually focus more on enterprise customers with annual billings. High yearly contract value and long-term contracts make it more complicated to churn. Smaller businesses typically have much higher rate. Unlike the large companies, the early-stage companies target small and mid-sized businesses with monthly billings, shorter contracts and overall lower contract value. Do you remember I emphasized the word annual while talking about the SaaS churn rate benchmarks? It's time to explain why. The trickiest thing in 
and the churn rate calculation is based on either annual or monthly churn rate numbers. Let's look how they differ. Let's assume that a startup has 1000 customers. The 5% annual churn will result in the loss of 50 customers within a year, which is not so dramatic, right? At least this loss is easy to recoup with new customers. But what's happening with the 5% monthly churn rate? Our startup will lose 460 customers in one year because the monthly churn compounds over time and reduces the number of customers by 5% every month. The loss of amount half of the customer base can be difficult to compensate quickly. For early stage SaaS companies or those primarily selling to small and mid-sized businesses, the expected churn rate will be closer to 3-5% to monthly. However, the larger customers you target, the more your business matures, the closer you get to the ideal 5-7% to annual churn rate. Eventually, your progress should look like on this graph. The more mature you become, the lower the churn rate. But what if the number you get is not as you would like it to be? Let's talk about how to reduce churn rate. To a certain extent, it is quite fair to claim that churn is inevitable. In the end, you cannot satisfy everyone. However, to secure the company's profitability and revenue growth, your sacred duty is to minimize the churn rate, pursuing the target of 3-5% to annually. Here are a few tips to help you improve your churn rate. The first one is to get to know your customers better. It may seem not obvious, but your anti-churn campaign starts long before you win a customer. You have to know who your ideal customers are, how to reach them, what they need, and how much they are willing to pay for your product. The best way to see the full picture is by creating a customer persona based on users' characteristics such as demographics, industry, income, and jobs to be done. When your marketing team does everything right, the ball goes to sales. Lead qualification is what your sales representative must brilliantly perform. During the discovery call, sales development representative should scan a lead and determine if your company can fully satisfy their needs. At every stage of the sales pipeline, you have to make sure your value proposition is exactly what the customer is looking for. The second tip is to engage users. Starting from a free trial over the first six months, you should track customer engagement and make sure your product meets the customer expectations. It's up to you whether you will build your in-house system to monitor and manage the engagement or leverage a third-party tool. The main goal is to help users to engage with your SaaS product by constant communication, active listening, feedback gathering, and working on UX improvement. And my last recommendation is to get feedback from churned users. Customer feedback is the primary source of valuable information. Sometimes it's not easy to get honest response from a churned customer, but it is worth trying. Assign your best sales reps to contact those who left and get their feedbacks through specific questions. You can also gather responses via inbuilt customer surveys to later turn them into an actionable insights. Okay, let's summarize. Churn is inevitable, but you can control and improve it. An average churn rate benchmark is 5-7% to annually. If you're a mature SaaS company, you can expect around 5% monthly churn if your business is young and if you target small to mid-sized businesses. Poor customer service, inefficient lead qualification, and bad user experience are among the reasons why clients churn. Customer satisfaction based on monitoring. A well-conducted analysis will help you reduce your churn rate. And from my experience of leading a UX design agency for SaaS products, I'm more than sure that customer-oriented design and great user experience can help you reduce churn rate. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next videos.